Welcome to In The Workshop, a Stuart 504 boiler, part 8, basic metalworking, making the gas burner mounting. I made the base plate in the last episode, and in this clip I'm carefully marking it out for the position of the gas burner, using a Sharpie felt tip pen. For any engineers watching, I'm really sorry about this, but it works for me. A while back, I bought a couple of pieces of steel angle, and I'm going to do a special episode in the How to Build a Model Steam Engine series very shortly, showing how to make the cylinder mountings in a couple of different ways. But I did have some spare angles, so I'm using it for this job. I'm cutting two pieces of angle at the same time in the bandsaw. And here they are, in position on the main bed plate. It's fairly obvious what the general arrangement is going to be, and here it is. These two pieces of angle will support the gas burner. I measured the first piece of angle and put three felt tip pen marks on it and to mark the other piece I held part A against part B and marked that. But I made a mistake and as you can see here the lines are not in the right place and no I didn't do this on purpose. It's always a good idea to measure things twice but this is a bit obvious, I just made a mistake. So I measured it again and put it right and it's nothing to do with recently being prescribed metformin hydrochloride for my type 2 diabetes. I'm not sure about this stuff. When I first started taking it about three weeks ago, my 67-year-old brain developed a severe malfunction, and I'm really having to put some pressure on myself to rectify this problem. I've managed my diabetes quite well for the last three years, but my new doctor said it was probably a good idea to go on metformin, so I'm not sure about it yet. I didn't bother videoing drilling the three holes in the steel angle. It's fairly straightforward. I didn't use a centre punch. I used a centre drill, followed by a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill to drill the holes in both pieces of steel angle. I'm going to use 4BA bolts and clearance size for 4BA bolts is 9 64ths of an inch. But by using a 5 30 seconds of an inch drill it puts a bit of tolerance into the job and will allow slight adjustment of the two pieces of angle to hold the burner in place. And not, and I repeat, not to build in a tolerance for my incompetence. The next part of the job involves using some marking out blue on the bed plate. I'm only using the marking out fluid under the position of where the holes are going to be. And I did this at both sides of the bed plate. I think this stuff is alcohol based because the solvent evaporates very quickly. And it smells very nice too. A health and safety notice. In these times of self-isolation, please do not be tempted to sniff your bottle of marking out fluid. A proper engineer would use engineer's clamps, but I've only got one. Note to self, buy some more engineer's clamps. I'm using these plastic spring clamps, and they hold the pieces of steel angle in place just firmly enough for me to mark through the holes onto the marking out blue. The next part of the job is to temporarily fit the gas burner in between the two pieces of angle, and push the two pieces of angle together to grip the burner and then very gently, using a scriber point, make a mark on the marking out blue on the bed plate. This clip shows the marks on the marking out blue, but they're very faint because I didn't put a lot of pressure on with the scriber. After I drilled the holes, hopefully accurately, on the marking out blue, it was time to remove it, and for that I'm using methylated spirits, or denatured alcohol. This stuff smells very nice too. I'd like to thank some of my Patreon viewers who sent me information about denatured alcohol or methylated spirits. Not only can you use it in a variety of different burners, it's a powerful degreasant and it also removes marking out blue, plus it's quite a good hand sanitizer. Because at the moment, an awful lot of very selfish people in the UK are panic buying things like toilet rolls and hand sanitizers. But methylated spirit sales remain about the same as they've always been. And no, I'm not going to go out and buy 20 gallons of it. What I'm doing at the moment is tightening the nuts on the bolts. I use brass bolts because they're the only countersunk bolts I had in 4BA size. And here you see the finished item. It's holding the gas burner very well. And this is what it looks like with the boiler on top of it. I just need a suitable wooden mounting base to put the burner heat sink on and then once I bolt the boiler in place over the top of this that's it, the job's done. I wondered whether to put an end stop on but no, it's overkill, it's just a waste of time. I can see exactly where the burner is. As long as I don't push it too far underneath the boiler it will be fine. 
The final part of the job is to slacken off all the nuts and squeeze both sides of the steel angle together and retighten the nuts. By the time this heat sink burner mounting has been painted, the gas burner itself will be a very tight fit in between the two pieces of angle. All I need to do now is just clean up all the steel, scour it as a key for the paint using some Scots Brite, then it's into the outer part of the workshop to paint it. I'm using my painting jig with the panel pins, so the first thing I do is paint the underside. And then I need to flip it, turn it over. And OK, it will leave four marks underneath, but who's going to look there? One viewer suggested that I hammered the pins all the way through, and therefore used the points of the pins to support the work. I did try this once and found that the sharp points scratched the paint. And also, when I stabbed my hand on the sharp point sticking out of the wood, I didn't think it was the best idea. I suppose it would be a good idea if you wanted to make a miniature scale model of an Iron Maiden type torture device. I allowed 24 hours before I painted this top coat on. And as usual, this is HMG Satin Black, a really good quality enamel paint in a spray can. As before, after painting the underside, I flipped it, carefully put it back on the panel pins, and painted the top. Probably I should have used a heat resistant paint, but I find this HMG Satin Black resists the heat quite well anyway. At the moment it's very shiny, but it does dry quite dull. That's it for this episode, it's back to the self-isolation, in my workshop. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Stay safe and stay well. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.